This is your morning report on ongoing events. As of last night, the Imperial government has declared martial law by order of Crown Prince Cedric. A military command center has been established, and Governor General Rufus has been appointed as its interim representative. Further, as of this morning, railway access has been severely restricted, not only in Heimdall, but throughout all of Erebonia. resource at our disposal to determine the suspect's background. We will share this information with all of you the moment we are certain. So I ask that you wait for now, and above all, stay strong. I understand your anger, your sorrow, and your fear, and feel them just as keenly, if not more. And so I pledge to you, we will uncover the truth of this incident. Oh, really? This is the morning news broadcast for Trista. We're told the Emperor's current status is still critical. At this point, it's hard to determine whether or not he'll be able to recover. We now have a message from Prince Oliver to share with you. The Emperor has yet to regain consciousness. We cannot yet let our guards down. Do not become lost in rumors and hearsay. Remain steadfast, and support one another through this dark time. Have faith that the light of hope will yet show itself, and illuminate the path ahead. I never thought Ash would...
What? We had our differences at first, but he wasn't a bad person. After everything we overcame together, we grew to understand each other. And I know now, there is absolutely no way he's the kind of person who would commit such an atrocity. Well, I agree. He was definitely a troublemaking punk, but he wasn't selfish or irresponsible. And despite his lone wolf tough guy act, he'd always help us when we needed him. Yeah, but looking yeah. back, something may have been a little off about him. It was quite the surprise to hear he was from Hommel. Tita, you knew someone else who was born there, right? Yeah, I didn't know there was another survivor. He's in Liberal right now. I'd like to contact him if possible. Joshua. Unfortunately, we can't use the communication Joshua. network and we're not allowed to board Panzer's soldats. To be honest, I'm beginning to worry about Altina too. Yeah. Maybe we should have stopped her from going. Green? Never thought that kid could have done something like that. It's my fault. Even though he seemed like he was tough, I always knew he was a bit unstable too. I should have done something about it after our trip to Hamel. But I kept getting sidetracked by other problems. failed him as his instructor. That's not true, Reen. This is my first time being an instructor, and I'm still a total half-ass. Toa's new here too. You can't just expect to be perfect at it after only a few months. That's right, Reen. I think the important thing is what you do next. Altina's already hard at work, right? Well... Why is she... I received a message through the emergency channel. We've been called to gather. I must report to Intelligence Division HQ. B but Are you going to be okay? Right now, things are... There is no need to worry. I'm sure Milliam and Major Arendelle will be there as well. However, I'm more worried about Ash. Well... What he did was so out of the blue, there must be something going on behind the scenes. And that black haze! I bet it had something to do with it! That's the only conclusion I can come to. It's possible he was being controlled by some manner of chemical or hypnosis. It is also fairly likely something of a magical nature was involved as well. Therefore, I will attempt to gain as much information as possible. I refuse to leave a fellow member of Class 7 behind. Allie... You've grown a lot. I agree. She's become very dependable. Even if you've been summoned, don't forget, you're still a student of Thor's. If they try to limit your actions, let us know through the emergency comm network. I'll come get you, even if I need to use Valmar to do it. Instructor Reen. Yeah, us too. We'll definitely come help you. No matter what. Please be no careful. No matter what. Thank you, everyone. I will do my best not to cause you trouble. Green, is Tilly there? No. Ah. Nope, not me. Lecter's busy with something too. So that means I'm too late. No. Oh no, it's nothing. I'll take care of it, so don't worry.
Dinosaurier. We cannot, we must not, and we will not. That to what? With blood and with iron, we shall meet out justice. citizens of Erebonia. What? I am Cedric Rice Arnor, son of Emperor Eugent. Oh. Hi. 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 What's up? I think they're very different. The Emperor yet remains in critical condition. Needless to say, we have the most skilled doctors available to attend to him. But the situation is still dire. We would greatly appreciate if everyone would pray for Adios to see him through this. However, this incident demonstrates without a shadow of a doubt the scope of the threat looming over our nation and the identity of the foreign power that orchestrated this tragedy. In my father's stead, as Crown Prince, I hereby entrust the fate of our nation to a man I'm sure you may all be familiar with, Chancellor Gilliath Osborne. Alongside him will be Governor General Rufus Alberea, who has already proven himself instrumental in overseeing the military command center. I wouldn't know. They're both liars. I am Rufus Alberea, interim representative during this period of martial law. We are still in the process of investigating the events that occurred at Valflame Palace. However, we have identified the weapon that was used. It was a handgun manufactured in the Republic of Calvert. It was a Verne Company make. It was made of a material that allowed it to pass through metal detectors without being discovered. Further, it has come to light that in the past few days, nearly 100 Calvardian spies had infiltrated Heimdall. What the war? Right, 
I am Giliath Osborne, Chancellor of the Empire of Erebonia. It pains me beyond description that we can do nothing more for His Majesty than simply pray he pulls through. My inability to prevent this tragedy leaves me shaking with shame and regret. We're going to war with Calvary. But I ask you, is this the time to cower in our homes? To sit and wait and worry? No, it is most emphatically not. After countless instances of military activity at our borders, our neighbor has finally become brazen enough to send spies into our capital. And now this. The message they have sent us is clear. For hundreds of years now, they have been a menace to our nation. But this is no less than a declaration of war. We can no longer ignore the threat at our eastern borders. The Republic of Calvert. Needless to say, we would be foolish to take such a country lightly. Their size and military might are nearly equal to our own. Therefore, in order to survive, we must make a decision. We're going to war. We must put aside the difference between noble and commoner, between individuals and organizations. And good war. In order to overcome this dire threat to our way of life, every citizen of Erebonia must come together as one. To enable such a feat, we will establish a new law in the coming days. It shall be known as the National Mobilization Law. What are we doing? Fantastic, my place, Lord. Emma, Gaius. Reen, are you at camp? We need to meet up and talk about everything that's happening, including that speech just now. Also, there are some people you need to meet. I have no issue with it. How about you? <sighs> Very well. We'd like to know the situation ourselves. But how do we leave the camp? Good point. I don't think the Imperial Defense Force is just going to let us waltz out of here. 
Right, but we need to find an excuse so they'll let Reen out. Oh, I'm sure we'll figure something out. Celine! What? Is, is that Class 7's... Hmm. Ah, so the familiar's here. Shut up and follow me! Get moving already! Follow you where? Do you recall that old oak tree in the center of camp? I'll summon a magic circle by it that will let you travel through the spirit veins. Y you can do that? Man, this magic stuff sure is handy. Take us with you! You guys! Hey, all of you. Yeah, Don't try to claim no. this doesn't concern us. Ash is our classmate. We're worried about Altina too, so please let us go with you. Come to think of it, this totally falls under our special ops missions, right? Yeah, no. All right. Class oh, 7, okay. resume special ops missions. Yes, yes sir! Uh, I don't care which of you tags along, let's just go already. I need all of you to be careful. If things get dangerous, give us a call. <sighs> if you're going to go, at least make sure you're fully prepared. May Adios watch over you. Take care. Thank you. The final, finally, finally jumped in. Just tell me what you need. Take care. No problem. You guys! It's everyone from the old Class 7. Yeah. I'm glad you made it out. Good work, Celine. It was nothing. Oh, so you all came with him. Yeah. That's right! We may slow you down a little, however. Not at all. 
It will be a relief to have you with us. All this concerns you guys just as much as it does us. Milium isn't with you after all. Yes, she rushed off this morning, and I haven't been able to contact her since. <sighs> what in the world could she be doing at a time like this? When she called you, it seemed like she was worried about Ali, right? Yeah, something's definitely going on. We'll just have to leave it to Milium for now. Yes. I'm worried. But I'm sure she'll be fine. Let's go on. She gone. She gonna die. Can you go speak? Where are we going? The sky is making me uneasy. It's as though it's foreshadowing the worst of what's to come. The spirit veins are a mess too! Let us be off. Silver gleam of knowledge and shining jade winds. Let your opposed powers be as a gale across the skies of their souls. We are acting on orders for our mission. The students of the branch campus are accompanying us for this mission. There is nothing strange about us being here. Please yeah. inform the other members of the military police to allow us to pass, yeah. should they see us. Yeah. You guys bought the witches. Huh? Ew.
A Heimdall Cathedral. It feels oddly quiet around here. Let's go inside after we've finished any other business we have. So, you've arrived at last. Yes, it's good to see you all again. Please, come in. They're waiting for you just over there. Who? Oh. Who is waiting for me? Ah, I'm glad you all finally made it. The church has decided this issue now merits the attention of the congregation for the sacraments. As such, the archbishop and all the staff here have been moved to another location. <laughs> Thank you for all your diligence, Rosine. I'd feel much better if you were to stand watch over the front door now. Just in case. Yes, understood. Leave it to me. Let me introduce you. This man is a member of the Gralsritter, a division of the Septian Church. He's the second in command, in fact. Thomas Lysander. He holds the seat of Second Dominion and is sometimes known by his title, the Partitioner. Now allow me to introduce you. This man is one of the Gross Ritter's Twelve Dominion, the successor to the Eighth Dominion, Gaius Warzel. <sighs> wow. Wow. Yeah, a lot happened all at once. After graduating from Thoris, I returned Nord and began observing the struggle between Erebonia and Calvert. However, I began to feel something dark and sinister carried on the winds of the plateaus. I consulted my father and the chief, and eventually my old teacher, Father Barkhorn, came to visit. You might remember the name. He was the traveling priest we chased after during the Civil War. But it turns out, he was also the Eighth Dominion of the Gralsritter, with the title The Roaring Lion. He was an extremely skilled knight who investigated the Salt Pale in North Ambria and trained Brigadier General Bardius. Apparently, he was worried and came to Nord to check up on me. He explained to me that what I had been sensing was called the Gale of Ruin. I'm not sure why I'm able to sense it. Maybe it's because I'm a descendant of those who fought alongside the Lionheart Emperor. I mentioned this to him and he came to a realization, but then it happened. A Calvardian ship that broke past the 7th Armored Division attacked my village. My father was away at the time. I fought back in an attempt to protect my family, but it was no use. 
Right as I prepared myself for death, my teacher threw his huge body in the way to protect me. And as he lay there dying, he passed his stigma onto me. Across the nearly 1,000 year history of the Gralsritter, its highest ranking members have each borne one of 12 sacred markings. This was one of those markings. Indeed. But you may simply call me Rose. I had you all gather here for one reason. To explain to you the background between the Hexen clan and the church. <laughs> it's not as though we don't believe in Adios. There have been some differences in opinion over the years, but we and the Church have worked together on a number of occasions. For example, during the War of the Lions, or the Vampire Incident in the Middle Ages. Not to mention the fight against the Dark Dragon 800 years ago. But all that was just Rose sticking her nose into other people's business. Hmm. Legend has it, Emperor Dreykel's camp was once visited by a good witch. And the novel Red Moon Rose features a vampire hunter affiliated with the church who was, in truth, the true ancestor of the vampires. The woman you now see before you was both of these people, even if she looks a bit different. Hmm, 800 or so. However, wow. you should know that my situation is somewhat unique. All other witches are normal humans. Except, of course, for the fact that they are all descendants of those who once guarded the Septarian of Fire. Each assumed the form of a colossal guardian and went about granting boons and performing miracles for its people. For a few centuries, the land of Erebonia prospered. But eventually, its people began to vie for power and control. The Septarians had always granted their people's wishes. But now, their peoples each wished for the other's destruction. And so, the two colossi began fighting. Their battle ravaged the earth and split the sky, devastating the entire region. The humans tried to stop them, but it was in vain. The Septarians' fight continued 1,000 days, scorching the land black. When the battle ended at long last, it was a tie. Exhausting their power in one final strike, the two Septarians were blown away, left as nothing but empty shells. Yet the tale did not end there. The power expelled by each Septarian collided and became one. 
resulting in the creation of an entirely new entity. The Great One, the Septarian of Steel. It was an existence created well, from the well. union of fire and earth. It was beyond anything else in this realm. It was the ultimate source of power. Though things seemed fine at first, the survivors of the war soon realized the eternal conflict within it. They knew this conflict would cause it to grow ever more unstable, and that it was not something that could be handled by mankind. With the Holy Beast's assistance, the kins of fire and earth joined together to see the Great One sealed away. However, each of their attempts ended in failure. Left with no other options, they resorted to their final plan. The Great One would remain whole in the Higher Plane, yet its physical incarnation in this world split into numerous shards. It was this final gambit that saw disaster averted. Indeed. Their combined efforts bore fruit. The Kin of Earth created seven vessels, while the Kin of Fire split the Great One's power and infused each vessel with a part of it. Seven dolls in the form of knights, each bearing the Great One's power. The Divine Knights. English dog! Oh my god. 900 years ago, Heimdall was a small city of only about 50,000 people. However, it was one of the burgeoning centers of culture for the region. The Septian Church had finished construction on the Heimdall Cathedral, and there were plans to develop the city even further. But it was then the Dark Dragon appeared, blanketing Heimdall in miasma and transforming it into a city of the dead. Emperor Astorius chose to lead his people south and made St. Art the new capital of Erebonia. In helping Emperor Astorius deal with this crisis, the Hexen clan and gnomes each suffered substantial losses. The Hexen clan lost its elder, and the gnomes their holy beast. And so ended their alliance. The final time they spoke would be a century later. It was when Emperor Hector awakened the Vermilion Knight to reclaim Heimdall from the Dark Dragon. He did so at the urging of the Chief of the Gnomes and the new Elder of the Hexen Clan, myself. However, the Emperor fell to the Dark Dragon's miasma and the Vermilion Knight to its curse. The Emperor's son had the Chief of the Gnomes and myself seal the cursed knight deep below the Imperial Palace. That would be the last act our two clans performed together. I do not know why, but the gnomes cut off contact with our clan and hid themselves away. In the 800 years that followed, whenever war struck Erebonia, a divine knight would enter the stage, demonstrate its might, then vanish. I was certain the gnomes were involved, Yet all we could do was guide Awakeners on the proper course. This unending pattern reached its most fevered peak 250 years ago during the War of the Lions. The false Emperor Orthros unearthed the cursed Vermilion Knight, and a mercenary under Prince Lucius' employ awakened the Palatinate Knight. Prince Dreykels found the Ashen Knight, and Leanne the Argent Knight. The four awakened at once, me. made for a grand war indeed. I want me. The Void Knight. Yeah.
mean black al barrack Originator Zero. Could that be OZ, perhaps? <gasps> That's what the Black Workshop called Milliam and Altina. They're model numbers. OZ. Oh, what are you talking about? So you finally made it. That voice. Vida. Vida! Ah, so the prodigal granddaughter returns. Misty, d uh, Vita. I heard you had been acting on your own. <laughs> nice to see you again, grandmother. Emma, Celine, and Class 7, too. And thank you for mediating, Mr. Lysander. Oh, don't even mention it. It always breaks my heart to see a family torn apart so. Vita, why? You really don't plan on ever coming back, do you? That's correct. As I said before, my allegiance will forever lie with the Grandmaster. I can't return to you and Grandmother. I can never go back to the way I used to be. Just like the Steel Maiden. Seriously, who even is this Grandmaster person? Hm. I have no clue. But it is clear she is quite taken with them. So do tell, Vita. If you have not decided to return to us, why show yourself now? Has Ouroboros finally decided upon its course of action? Yes. After our experiments with the three Ions, the six other Anguists came to a unanimous decision. Our... They decided to ignore my warning. They will work with the Chancellor and the Gnomes to bring about the Great Twilight, completing the Phantasmal Blaze Plan. Phantasmal Blaze Plan again. <gasps> that's... So that's how it is. The reason Ouroboros was so quiet the past month wasn't because they left Erebonia. It was weak. to carry out their plan. And determine whether they should work alongside enemies and traitors. How can that be? If that were the case, it means... They're all our enemies? Is this...? It's not the Cathedral's bell. Huh? I think I recognize it from Crossbell. You do? Yeah, I'm sure of it. I remember hearing it right before the incidents in Crossbell, when we were still independent. Oh, the one from the museum! The bell from Stargazer's Tower? But the sound's coming from a different direction than the museum. <laughs> the Phantasmal Blaze Plan. What a fitting name. I wonder how much of this she foresaw. That is quite enough mumbling to yourself! If you know what is going on, show us! It'll be a bit tough without Grianos. I'll need your help, Grandmother. Emma, Celine, you too. Yes! Ugh, I'm not your slave! Mm. Yeah, same thing. 
Bina, Bina. Now then, let's say we celebrate the continuation of the Phantasmal Blaze plan by ringing in the Great Twilight. Well, no. I, Enforcer Number Zero, the Fool, no shall way, play guy. the opening note. No way, guy. That out! Huh. Sure is something. Well, how about that? So, the beginning of the end, is it? Huh. <laughs> Deja vu. <sighs> the Grawl of Erebos. Just as the Black Records foretold. The crypt where the great power will be reborn. Couldn't have guessed this is how my day would turn out when I woke up this morning. Let us begin. It is time. Chief of the gnomes and head of the workshop, show me the way, Black Albrick. As you wish, my lord. Really? 
Rufus. Milliam. Was that... Allie? Yes. But why? Boss, Zeno, Milliam. Azure Siegfried. Uh, and that guy in the lab coat, isn't that... The blazing demon and the fool were there as well. So that's the maiden. Why? We just spoke this morning and... 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 What's going on?! Lisa. That man's name was Lumen or something like that, right? His hair looked different. <laughs> Franz Lumen, the first disciple of G. Schmidt and the deceased husband of the Reinford Group's chairman, also known as Franz Reinford. Ah, so he has been lurking in the shadows these past 20 years. Yes, perhaps for the sake of working with the Chancellor to engineer this very moment. <gasps> Elisa! Snap out of it! Now's not the time! As a bracer, I can't just sit here and let them pull off whatever that Twilight crap is they're planning. How about all of you? She's right. We can't stop here. We gathered together to do whatever we could to help. Our goal remains unchanged. Yep, true. Elisa? Let's go. Yeah. Well, Vita, what will you do now? Well, I'd like to charge in there alongside the rest of you, mostly out of spite. Unfortunately, I suspect things won't be quite that easy. What do you... Something's... There's a turbulent swirl in the mana. Was that? I believe so. Father Thomas, Father Gaius, cryptids and magic knights have appeared all over the city. Oh my god. When? I will see you guys on the next episode if I see you guys. Here I'm alive.